let's uh, let's turn to the next slide with the picture of the drone. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll talk a little bit more about drones in just a minute, but it is important to know that drones have been used very heavily in warfare since uh, the Kosovo bombing of. Uh, 1998, 1999. But what has changed since the CIA began sending out um, armed drones in 2001 is that drones are now used with Hellfire missiles on board, and they are used uh, not primarily for direct attack. There are still many, many surveillance drones out there, but their method now becomes a way to avoid aerial bombing, a way to avoid traditional assassination groups like the group that killed Osama bin Laden. Now you can use a drone and you can still aim that drone at a particular person. So it becomes a tool of assassination. And I will talk a little bit more about the implications of that in just a minute. So if we want to turn to the next slide now. Yep. Yeah, this is the uh, uh, the seal, the image of the Cyber Command, and this was formed just last year. And on 13th of July of this month, uh, the new Defense Secretary in the United States, Leon Panetta, said that now we will have to consider the commercial internet to be an operational theater of war. And he said, we have been too defensive. We must now go on the offense and attack in the commercial Internet. And so we see this usually as a way of avoiding bloodshed. But that is not always true, because uh, Israel and the United States participated in attacking the Iranian facilities used for enriching uranium, using cyber warfare. But these same viruses that they were created by Israel and the United States moved over to attack other kinds of Iranian power generation facilities. And so even if you try to make a cyber war tool that is very, very focused, it can become a general tool of war that has very, very bad consequences at times. And sometimes those consequences cannot be predicted. Now, if uh, we want to turn to the next slide with this complicated map. Yeah. Yeah. All of these tools we talk about, the sp tools from space and the drones and the cyber war, they are not to be considered uh, in and of themselves. They are part of a massive new battlefield that uh, is now considered as a single cyber battlefield that covers the ground and covers the oceans and combines the abilities of robotic tanks on the ground and drones in the air and micro satellites in space. And there has been a lot of talk in the United States government of coming up with what they call emergent intelligence. You let the satellites and the drones talk to each other and come up with a form of swarm intelligence in which these kind of technology weapons can make their own decisions about when and where to attack. In fact, there is a professor in England, in Reading, who is trying to give drones a moral conscience because he says if we let drones make their own decision about attacking, and they have no moral capability to make a judgment, then they need to have a new kind of microchip inside them that says, uh, perhaps I should not attack this orphanage because I might kill too many people. It is frightening to think that we would even consider giving automated robot weapons that type of power and judgment. And yet that is precisely what is happening today. Uh, if we want to go to the next slide here. Yep. Here is why it is so important 
to keep track of what is happening uh, with drones at places like uh, Kirana and S Range, and uh, places like Holomon Air Force Base in New Mexico and Creech Air Force Base in Nevada. Because if you have these swarms of robot planes, uh, they can suddenly attack regions that are as large as the kind of regions that used to be bombed by, you know, blanket aerial bombing. And in fact, that funny looking drone on the top right hand that looks like the space shuttle, that is a new kind of drone just coming in from Afghanistan called the Beast of Kandahar. And uh, what happens now with these drones is that someone will be trained in Kirana or in Holloman in New Mexico, and then they might be assigned to the Air Force who has facilities in places like Afghanistan that we know about. Or they might be assigned to the CIA who has forces in Shamsi in Pakistan or in Djibouti uh, to attack Yemen. That And these facilities are not talked about. They are not acknowledged. Or that same drone pilot might go to the Joint Special Operations Command who maintain bases inside Pakistan and Yemen that are even more secret than the CIA bases. So we have no way of knowing how many drones, how many of the armed drones with missiles on them are flown every day because some are flown by the Air Force, some are flown by the CIA, some are flown by special operations. And you will hear news reports every now and then in Pakistan of a dozen people killed at a wedding or something like that. But those are the only ones you hear about. There are many, many more because we don't have any sense or control of where that is taking place anymore. If you want to show the next slide, I show a picture of a book here, a brand new book that is very, very important. Um, it is by uh, Stephen Rocco uh, and Rick Halperin. And they said, we want to look at what's happened with bombs and what's happened to drones and all this new warfare. And their conclusion was that you do not have fewer civilian deaths when you move to precise robot warfare. Because even if you start out with smaller amounts of land that is targeted, the ability of the drone becomes so seductive that somebody like President Obama, for example, he has seen such success between February 2009 and today that he assigns more and more drones, and we end up with just as much collateral damage as if airplane bombing was used. This is a very, very scary trend that not many people have talked about besides the people that wrote this book. And I'm glad to see this finally becoming uh, a topic that we must debate. So anyway, if we could turn to the next foil, we'll talk about what that means. Yeah. Here we see what the future of drones may look like, because uh, according to the New York Times, um, about a month ago, they said there are over 110 new designs of drones in the air, and some of them can look very small and kind of cute, like the little hummingbird on the bottom, and some of them might be thrown by a soldier beginning as a hand glider, as we see on the bottom there. And, and many of these drones are not in the air at all. You will see that uh, the little submarine there, there are many tiny miniature robot submarines being launched by the U.S. Navy today. And uh, in the top, the robot that goes alongside tanks, uh, they started using those to detect the bombs, the IEDs that many insurgents in Iraq would use. And now they have many styles of these robot tanks that go right alongside the human tanks and